Hey, how's everybody doing? How's everybody? Hey. Hey. This is going to be it's hard nice, to like it's recreate nice to see what we you. No, guys, this is the first time we've talked to these guys. Yes. We never spoke to them. Whatever you saw never. online, you didn't even hear it. It doesn't matter. So let's yeah. just do it now, and we're going to get to it. Effect. How the hell are you, Paralandra? We're here live in the montage. Doing great. Kinda. We're awesome. Doing great. Doing good, good. Absolutely oh, yeah. Phenomenal. First time I've heard this. I mean, it's okay. Yeah, I mean, we, if you want, we can skip all the introductions. Actually, no. I'm Justin. I'm the singer. I remember that. Thank I'm Justin, you. I'm the singer. He remembers that. I'm Ryan. I'm the lead guitarist. I'm Scott. I play bass. Yeah, Scott's going to get a little louder. I am Jake. I am behind the kit. I am Cam. I do screamy things with my throat folds. <laughs> with his throat. I'm Tyler. I play guitar and do vocals. And that's Paralandra, baby. Well, wait a minute. Yes. Hold yeah, up. Baby. I know I didn't talk to you before, but somebody plays the MacBook. Oh, this boy. That yeah. guy what? plays the MacBook. What did I you do. just say this time? Something different? He knows how to finger a keyboard pretty oh, well. Oh, well, that, like, uh -oh. hey, hey, if you work those fingers on a keyboard, you're going to work them in other places in life. It's going to make sure you're going to make sure to bring you to another level of fingering. I'm, I'm telling Dude, you right no. now, it's going to be. Scott, let, it's okay. Everything's how good fine. are you at fingering, Scott? I mean, I got a kid. Oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> oh, <dude>. oh. <laughs> Wow. Was not expecting that. Was so maybe, take maybe two is taking a different turn. You know? So anyways, guys, we'll, I'll, I'll back up and say we, we started <laughs> and we had some technical difficulties yes. and we did like 20 minutes of this and then we're just starting all over. So um, I think we, got, yes. we, we started talking about each band member and what did. you did. And then I think I got into like, you know, how you guys write your music and who does what, how you go about it. So we're going to, this will be a lot of condensed. Condense we've already done quick. it once, so we're yeah, we're not going to be as long-winded, I guess, in, in an explanation as before. But I was just trying to figure out from you guys, like you know, again, how you guys did the process. Was it in studio? Was it in, so? You know, we've gone over this once. You you guys mainly do it separately, kind of like yeah. share files, I guess it would be back and back and forth yeah. and that kind of thing. There's not a lot of done live kind of thing, and um, yeah. And, and that seems to just work for the band. There's not a lot of like live rehearsal and live practice because you live in different spots. Yeah. But I'll, I'll let you guys explain it again. Well, thanks to uh, modern technology, we're able to communicate with each other when we're not actually there. So we have two guys start off writing the guitars and just basic song. Jake, over here. Don't be shy, man. Speak, right, speak yeah, right into that thing nice and loud. And explain the process, Jake, real quick. Let's hear it. Yeah, so essentially, um, <clears throat> Ryan and Tyler, they get together, they come up with a nice little product, and then they send it over to me. Um, Tyler already kind of pre-writes some of the drum stuff, and then from there, uh, like, he knows my writing style, so then I'd kind of just go in there, edit some stuff, add my own flair to it, and then uh, Justin, Justin uh, and Tyler also work on lyrics and Cam as well. And, and our yeah, good yeah. buddy Andrew, not in the band, but a very, very close friend and good guy all around. Uh, and yeah, and then add all that up, we take something to the studio and uh, add a, you know some production elements to it, uh, get it to that true Paralandra sound of like, you know, old but new kind of modern me metalcore is kind of what we're striving for and that's, that's that. Um, so does, I mean, is there like any critique back and forth? Like, you know, well, you know, can we do this? Can we, so who's, who's the main? The main person that like will Tyler. Their hand all the time. That would like, be. So, like, let's get a drum fill in here or whatever. And, you know, there's got to be some of that. Like, it, like who's the guitarist again? I'm sorry. Him and okay. Tyler. Yeah. And, uh, so, I mean, is, is there any time where you're like, well, I'd like to do a little bit more here or, you know, yeah. could, I, could I throw, you know, just how does it all break down to where there's too much of something or you don't feel there's enough or I'm not being exposed enough? Well, I never uh, view it that way. So, like it, like I said, it usually starts off. I mean, the best way uh, that works for us is Ryan will send me a demo, and I kind of like patchwork it, and I change what I would do, and then you know the whole drum situation. And a lot of that, those ideas were like, oh, let's try this. That usually happens in the studio when we're all there because you know we're just bouncing files back and forth to each other. So it's to get everybody's input through text. It's not there. We're not all in the same creative element. So when we're in the studio, that's where everybody starts to say their opinions and their ideas, and then we really fine tune everything. So, so, so again, I'm not. <laughs> we're trying to break us up. That was in the last. <laughs> but you know, so who's who's got the you know who's got the strongest opinion that usually wants something changed more often it's, than others? It's usually me, but I get like very nitpicky. But I always. Something wrong with I that. have. 
I think the final decision or opinion comes down to what works best, like what it works best for the song. And right. the, like I said, usually in the studio where I don't like think there's any wrong ideas or bad ideas. It's whatever idea wins. Like he could have a part he loves. I could have a part I'm married to. But if it doesn't work for the song, the song's going to tell us. So I, I don't mean to like be hogging all oh, the God, questions, no. but you know, I just I, this this is a process that I've I've you know been subject to from the peripheral watching different things back in my day some bands recording different things and just trying to you know in these interviews i'm probably asked the bands all the same thing because i think you're going to get a different answer or answer from every band so it's just kind of interesting that um so is the, you, you guys do that process that's the way it comes together is are, are you guys the one that like mixes everything do you go to an outside source yeah and is there anybody then that then critiques the music from there that sort of is a producer yes, of sorts. Yes, we, we, uh, we do uh, outsource producers who we record with, and they usually end up mixing it and mastering it as well. Right. So they will also have a say. Like, we won't, well, we won't ever give them, like, final say. Yeah, and Like, play. we all have to agree on it. Right. Um, but right. usually, like, it, it tends to be, like, guitarists will have a little bit more say in the guitar parts, vocalists have a right. little bit more say. Like, you're the one playing it, you're the one singing it, do what you want to do. But other than that, we're all pretty much, we're all have final say in the end. It's a gotcha. team effort for yeah. sure. So and yeah. uh, we all settle on the something way. new in the works or no. Yes. yes. Uh, so you're in the process of writing now. Yeah. Have some, um, how many, how many projects, CDs, albums, whatever you you know, recordings, EPs, what, what do you have out now? So we only, I mean, we have our first single autopilot override that we, what was that? Jul July of 2022. It's when we uh, released our first song and then Searching for Separation, our first EP that came out this past December. Um, that's it. So we have seven songs out right now, but we are currently in the middle of writing a full length album. Um, our last EP was with uh, JD from Ice Nine Kills. That was our producer uh, for that. That was uh, my next question. For, yeah. for that EP. Phenomenal uh, guy yeah, he, from what I understand. Yeah, he, great guy. Uh, and really, I think... I mean, at what he does, yeah. I think he really helped us... Uh, when we got to the studio, he helped us refine who we were as a band because we were still such a new band that really didn't have it fully figured out yet. Yeah. Like Autopilot doesn't even have Cam's vocals, you know? It has Tyler screaming because we didn't know we were going to go into the full-blown metalcore direction even at that time. But obviously, you know, like I said, he helped us kind of figure out who we are in a little bit. And now this next project, uh, we're going through Mikey Kanoi uh, from the band Set for Tomorrow. Uh, great guy. Great producer. Uh, we're making some really cool stuff with him. Some more creative stuff. I feel like uh, going outside the box a little bit, and we're we're all super stoked for the stuff we're doing right now. Yeah, JD being a guitarist, I'm sure maybe he, you know there there was probably a little bump there. Yeah, um, he's just he's, so the first seven songs you had JD was involved with. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's a, he's a monster man. <laughs> so the new guy just. A little the same. You, you feel him that there's a it's, big difference in the music or the direction he's taking you, just because he's got a different musical influence. Himself. Honestly, the energy feels the exact same. Like gotcha. We because like I have a very I've always had a very similar writing style, like based off of what uh, Justin did. Right. So like that helped working with him, the guy I basically learned how to play guitar. For. So, oh, JD. Yeah, just his like his music. That's you know what inspired me. But like so, it's the same feeling going working with Mikey because we sync the same way as well. So everything just sm flows very smoothly. And it's right. fun. It's, there's a lot of energy. We, there's never a dull moment. And we're yes. being productive. That yeah. Really it's, it's a blast. And that's what it, you it, want. It wasn't even that big of a, like, it, it doesn't feel like that much of a change up. Like, there's not yeah. one was better, yeah. one was worse. It's different experience, but same. Feels it's like home. <laughs> it's still yeah. Paralandra, you know. And hey, you know, congratulations on the baby, man. Um, my yeah. uh, my my wife and I we had our son. Well, he's gonna be ten months this month, right? So, so August tenth is his birthday. He's gonna be one years old. So before that, we were trying to go over like names and all that. We're like, hey, you know, we're gonna have a boy. What are we, what are we gonna name him? And I was like, well, we named him. We we ended up naming him Harrison, right? And that was my my grandfather's mother's maiden name, last name. Oh, I love it. So we we said, well, screw. It. We'll just that's a first name. We can use that. So I guess what I'm trying to say is Paralandra. Where did we come up with Paralandra? This is going to be an interesting one because I've been wondering this all this time, Randy. Uh, that's 
Somebody give a mic to Tyler real quick. I don't, I don't even ask those questions anymore. Uh, I mean, some of the names of these bands today are just like, you know, there's a book or something. You no, it literally, exactly. So, <laughs> you know, just you like, got us. <laughs> I'm a, so, like, it, there's not even, like, some big, deep meaning. Like, I love the band Silent Planet, and right. they were named after um, yeah. C.S. Lewis. So I was like, huh, what other books did he write? I'm like, oh, Paralandra, that's yeah. cool. And then we And Paralandra is actually <laughs> in the, the trilogy yeah, of Silent the. Planet. I was going to say, if we took Planet. a fucking nationwide poll, you know, it'd be like Lord of the Rings, you know, <laughs> just, Lord of the Flies. Fucking, you know, some of these names are just crazy. Some of those big ones, though, I don't think you can get. I mean, I don't know how Mice and Men got away with it, with seeing as how, like, they had movie rights well, and stuff, too, but I don't know. Yeah, don't know. Such and that's, but, you know, that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes, I mean, uh, above product. and beyond the logos today that no one can read, so I'm like, almost an advocate of like maybe we should just put everything in text because you know some jackass is always going to comment when we put our flyers out and let's be honest we're the club that has the bands that have the logos that look like tree limbs and <laughs> it's shit the so logos. it's, always, it's to, always on ours you know to be fair like if if you have a flyer and you can't read any of the names you know it's gonna be a killer show that's all i'm gonna say like i don't think that's true insurance but <laughs> I, think that's, I think that's fake news no, I'm just, I'm just, just to say, it's like you know, it's going to be an ass beater of a show. Yeah. <laughs> it'll be an a, yeah, an It'll ass be. beater is the, the yeah. I mean, when you see those logos on those flyers, you know, if you drop your 15 year old son or daughter off and they get in the pit, they're going to come yeah. home with a broken arm, a black eye, maybe they're going to be paralyzed from the neck down. I don't know. <laughs> like, do we do we do we sign them in there with a the hard hat or not? You well, know, yeah. sometimes fire you got to have the around, the proper PPE. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's so you know. On another note, like. What are your what what all what's your aspirations? I mean, from here, I mean, you know, you're you're playing the clubs. Is that, you know, there's some bands then try to do what you're doing, and and I'll get to that first, and then I'll come back to that question. But so the reason that you guys are here, you're playing a show here June eighth, next Saturday. Um, it's not a CD release or anything like that, but you're going out on a little mini tour. So we talked about this before with the. What is your do you want to try scrap? It, no. So yeah, I'm I'll gonna have you name time. the cities again and yeah. just kind of go over how you set up this little mini tour that you're gonna I'll go out on the road with. Yeah, um, we're we're going on our first tour. Uh, in Seven five dates, days. You said? In, five. We leave in five days. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Um, we're starting in East Haven, Connecticut. Second date is right here in Rochester. Uh, then we go to Southbridge, Massachusetts. Then to Lindenhurst, Long Island, New York. Then Meadville, Pennsylvania. Then Allentown, Pennsylvania. Then uh, Cleveland is where we finish up. Cleveland. And uh yeah, we're we're super excited because uh we're we've we've had like a, a little run, like a, we've had week a weekender in August. Did we do any other or yeah, and a weekender in Ohio. Yeah. So we've done little like weekenders, yeah. but like this is our first official tour, you know, where we have really awesome support. Valoria and Gone Cold are freaking sick bands. Uh Valoria from Rhode Island and Gone Cold from I think Maryland. Um both of them are awesome, and we're super stoked to have them with us. And so you're I going think out with consistent bands, or staying with you for Val this run. Valoria is with us the first half, Gone Cold for the second half. Gotcha, that's okay. awesome. Yeah. Um, we're super stoked about that, and I think the biggest thing is to go off your question, like what are your guys' aspirations? I think we all just want to travel and play music. You know, yeah. like yes, ultimately, like whether how big or how small it is, like we just want to be together, hanging out, mm. traveling yeah. the country, playing music, and hopefully people like it, and hopefully people, you know, feel something with it, because that, that was always my biggest thing, like, when I started this thing with Tyler and Ryan, like, I told them, like, I just want, even if it's just four or five people who feel the music, like, that's something for me, you know? And, you guys are just grabbing the proverbial van and trailer, you're going to hop in it, you're going to go do these seven um, dates, you said, right? Seven? <laughs> no? There we go. Uh oh. Yeah. I've got an RV. He just goes, yeah. <laughs> Keep answering the question. We're going so, out. Oh, I roll. Yeah. Did, I, I, did I nail that too? I'm We're taking a bus. Camper sleeper. Oh, God. We're taking a bus. Yeah. We oh. Are. Like with the little school bus? No. no. That would be sick. Like so big. Big. I'll roll up with helmets on. Go big on. or go home. That's as far as I'm going to go with that. <laughs> Yo. Yo. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, we, I don't what? know what to say, but we're in a situation where we're being lended a bus pretty much by a family friend. Um, so it's going to be nice to fit. A, not the worst road situation. Dude, I, no, got, you'll be yeah, fine. I got three no. letters for you. Triple A. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is, oh, you got that? We got it right yeah. here. It, yeah. yeah. Just make sure this vehicle is part of that subscription. Yeah. 
No. Yeah. If not, I, I got a plan to super show. Super excited leg. to actually have something to travel in. Like is there anyone these... mechanical in the band? Oh, let's go! This nice. guy's gonna be working his ass Good off. Now. Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, as long as you know somebody can change a tire yeah. and oh, figure it's out easy how to money, change dude. a hose. I am a triple A service guy, so oh, no oh, kidding. There you go. They got triple A yeah. with them. They don't even have to go anywhere. Yeah, exactly. It's right there. <laughs> Make sure we both get your number when we're done. Yeah. 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 I'll, I'll hold the fl- uh, I'll hold the flashlight for you. Oh, you're the guy from like yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Frozen. So that yeah, I mean that sounds oh, exciting. Yeah. And Justin, you were saying earlier that this was something that you did, and you know I, I'll get on this and get off it real quick. But I, again, I get interested in all this stuff. Like, so where did you go to find these venues that you approached? Uh, what source? I, I reached out to bands from those areas. So like uh, local bands and said so. Yeah. So like we reach out well, to? the Connecticut date Valoria pretty much took care of that because they they played Connecticut That's where a lot. No, they're oh. not from there, but they have a market there. They've played there a lot. Uh, they know which venues are good, which are bad. Uh, not saying there's any bad venues, but uh, yeah. So they handled that one obviously for Rochester. I mean, we. Our first yeah. show ever was here, and I Aww. figure like if we're gonna head Aww. out on tour, like let's play it here, you know. Aww. I know, right? Thank you, though. Yeah. We we appreciate that. Yeah, our first like headliner home. here too, as well. So like it it just made sense it, to yeah, be it here. Had to be here. Yeah. Aww. Um, and then uh, Massachusetts. Uh, I talked with a good friend Evan Middleton from Sync with me. Uh, he put me in contact with the promoter from there. Uh, for Long Island. Uh. I originally reached out to Amityville Music Hall, but they couldn't hold the show because they're in the middle of doing renovations. Uh, I reached out to them because we had, that's where we met Valoria. We went down there to play uh, on their tour. And uh, so they referred me to another guy, Mike, who runs uh, shows at this venue, Sand City South, which is, uh, it's kind of like just an open standing floor area but like it's it's a sick vibe there's like a bar all around the it yeah it's a it's a it's a cool yeah i can't heard bar he's like i'm sold and then uh pennsylvania i mean uh we we played in erie before so uh and the promoter really liked us uh when we played there so i just reached out to him i'm like hey like do you know promoters in these areas of pennsylvania as he referred me yep uh and then cleveland uh we just got back from Ohio, and we have a few uh, friends and bands from Ohio. Midwinter, Dreamwalker, uh, I think Dead Cassette. Awesome. Is from Ohio, so yeah, you yeah. know, and, and I'm telling you, it's in you know the years that I've been doing this. There's a lot of bands like yourself that have have done these same things. Sometimes not having a friend or a band in that market that knows the venue or a promoter makes and it they harder set up these emails and it's like yes and maybe they're talking to one guy but it's not the guy but that guy books some shows there and you know i've heard some horror stories and i won't mention bands and i don't want to scare you on that because but it sounds like everything is uh, you know eyes dotted and t's crossed yeah but, it seems you know they get there and it's like you know there's a whole other show and it's like well dude yeah you know we can have you guys play at like you know five o'clock when doors open it was like well that's not you know that's not at all so yeah i mean <laughs> Communication has been here. I, I would, you know, a week wrapping into this thing. Mm-hmm. I get, you know, the next couple of days, just again, we're good, right? And we're here's when we're yep. coming, and everybody knows that we're playing. That's, cause that's what I've been be doing these past couple man, days. You show up, and it's like, you know, or tickets aren't selling, and this mm. and that, and you know, they they're not telling you. And then you get there, and it was like, well, dude, I mean, we had ten tickets sold, and we scrapped the show. It was like, well, we didn't hear that. Right. So for whatever little piece of advice I can give you, it's like, dude, always. Check back in, I think check that's back been in, the most overwhelming part is just keeping track of all the shows. And yeah. Like, yeah, and that's like why all the things you mentioned: ticket sales, right. promote, like promoting, making sure the locals are still good for it. Yep. Like, just and that's why group chats that we do. You know, yeah, we huge. found six months. I don't know a year ago that you know why just do things individually. Let's you, get every yeah. band on the show. So even if I'm going to, you know, if I was you guys and playing in another market and I got this guy and maybe, okay, is there a club contact that I can get and we can put him in this so that everybody knows what's going on, everybody knows where we're going, where we're parking, yep. when, who's playing where, that it, just, you know, something doesn't shift and you guys make a four or five or six hour drive and just, are, you know, because I mean, there's, there's no skin in the game for them to be like, you know, I'm ah, sorry. Right. You know, right. it's not like here where... 
You're not yeah. going to show up, and I'm like, oh, dude, I'm sorry. I booked another show, Justin. It's like, what the fuck? Could you imagine? Holy shit. It happens, man. You know, so I, just uh, being prepared for all this stuff is great. So it sounds like you got the vehicle in order. And Well, if that happens, we'll just play video games in the bus. <laughs> yeah, just, you know, yeah, yeah, video games on the bus. <laughs> He's, he meant bar. Yeah. bar. <laughs> no, no, no. Bar. If it has a bar, plus. Bar. It's yeah. always a plus. But, you know, something different. Yeah. That's like another thing. I love going to different cities. love trying different food. Yeah. I have this thing trying where I different like, bars. If I, I go to Baltimore, I'm like, oh, I wonder no. what this is like in Baltimore. Yeah. Or if I go to... <laughs> what? <laughs> All right. No, I mean, you know, exploring and that stuff is great. Just be safe. You know, it is. Yeah. There's a lot of bands that do what you're doing, Maybe too. Baltimore is bad so you're going to... Every, everything is going to be like, like in is. like this RV or bus or whatever you're bringing, and the gear's going in there, or are you towing a trailer? Uh, I know I'm getting off into the weeds. Like one of those buses it's just got the storage underneath. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's the other thing. Bands pull up and, uh, you know, somebody sees an out-of-state license plate and before you know it, their fucking shit's all been stolen. So yeah, just, forget all that. You know, eyes in the back of your head, man, the whole time that you're out there doing yeah, your thing, absolutely. man. Absolutely. Because we want you all coming back with what you were left with oh, and we yes. want you all coming back in one piece. Actually, you know I mean? we don't want to come back with merch. That's yeah. true. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's true. Not none of it. Take so, go, so go buy their merch. I mean, if you yep. go to the, shirt, the show, go get a shirt. You know what yep. I'm saying? You know? Yeah. And why not? Link tree. Plug. Yeah. Link tree is great, you know. Dude. Um, so you, you you mentioned video games for a moment. You're gonna be probably jamming on those things when you're on the bus, just hauling ass to another city. But like, wow, you know, you, back in the day, you play all these games like Dave Mira and a ATV, Off Road Fury and shit. You hear all these different Fucking soundtracks, right? Games. And it opens your whole world to a whole nother level of music. So yeah. let me ask you this: If you had one video game that you put your music on, <laughs> what would that video game be? Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Oh, no shit. Holy there we shit. Go. All right, Tony Hawk. Um, there we go. I'm going to uh, go ahead and that. say... How long that game, dude? Ready? I'm going to go ahead and say, Here Comes the Pain. Ooh, WWE, wow. Here Comes the Pain. WWE game. Like SmackDown vs. Raw. When the, yes. yes. When, the first, when the first SmackDown vs. Raw came out and it had like three <laughs> no, days grace on it and like yeah. uh, non-point and shit. Yeah, no, that was SmackDown vs. Raw 2007. Was it seven? Yeah, that had the greatest soundtrack of all time. That was, yeah, no, yeah, I'm great. sorry. The first yeah, one had like grace. Power Man 5000 yeah. on yep. it and yeah. shit. Cl no, we did back in my day when we were on vacation and doing like road trips with the family. Fucking first one that can count the, men, the most fucking Volkswagen. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I still do that. No, just no video head. games. Punch bro. buggy. That was what, that's what we used our time for. If you see a cow, you throw the other person out the door. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Those kind no of games. Deal. You know, wholesome family you know? games. You play yeah. with your children. Oh, that's exciting, man. Good for you guys. I yeah, mean, that's there's awesome. no better time of year to do it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Get your ass out there in the summer and, you know, next year maybe do a few more dates. And uh, Yeah, I mean, well, we're, we're definitely not done touring for the year. That's for sure. Oh, yeah. We're definitely not done touring for the year. <laughs> that's for sure. So, um, you know, Ed, let's just mention who else is on the show here. Yeah, uh... Well, obviously, we got us. We got Valoria coming from Rhode Island on the tour. Uh, Calamity. Love those guys. Great band. Great guys. Uh, then we got Fractured Fortune. Mm -hmm. another, another band yeah. full of just some of my best friends. And then Dance and Disarray. I think they've only been playing here for like less than a year now, but they're awesome. Yep. I've, every time I've seen them live, they're they really bring good. It. Yeah. Yeah, we're, uh, I mean, we are. We're, you know, look, me is the guy that, you know, chaperones most of this stuff i mean we're blessed to the, you know you guys and glass waves and, and oh, when i have these conversations waves. like at the bar you know with with more older people that come up and you know they acknowledge i do a lot of the younger stuff and, and i'm a little dated whatever but i'm just like you know a, a lot of these bands and i call you kids just because you're so much younger than me so no offense on that but i'm just like you know taken. they're you're all so respectful um, you know, you treat me no, a lot of the times for what brief interaction we have, which is nice, you know, not, not cause I'm so much older than everybody. So it's a little weird for me, but I, you know, I, I kind of feel like you're the, no, I don't know, you know, like talking about JD, you know, I've known him since he was like 14 years old when I first started doing this and he was, you know, Danny case, these kids played for me at steel disc club. I, I booked music and got my start at steel music hall. Like 16, 17 years ago, if not more. All of these kids, and it's just great to see everybody kind of graduate. And I mean, to see Danny where he is now, right. and you know, JD mm -hmm. when he was an Ice Nine, and just what he's doing, and Cody, and, and um, bass player, someone help me. Rob? Rob, 
Yeah, I mean, you know, from Vanity Strikes to all these other <laughs> yeah. bands that they've done. Vanity I mean, shout I've out Vanity Strikes. Strikes. Vanity Strikes, Kenny yeah. Krieger, man. So oh, good. Jesus. I've, they were I've, so good. I've known Kenny Krieger for many years, and when they put that band together, let me tell you, it kicked right off. And I'm just like, dude, he was the sickest, probably the sickest drummer they had. I mean, not to say anything else from anybody else. I mean, Mark Centrelli, I went to school with him. He's phenomenal on the drums. But, man, Kenny just killed it. And... I think without Kenny, I don't think Vanity Strikes would have started off the way it did. So where's he now? He's he actually he's in, he's huge into photography. Oh no, um, he, he, no, he's not in a band anymore. Um, he kind of you know got away from all that stuff. Um, but yeah, Vanity Strikes, man, that was a band that just had it all. Yeah, you know, and all those guys pretty much went on to do some great things. Whether it was inside of music or outside of music, they all did some great things. Yeah, and what's cool about all that stuff is it, it you know, I mean, with these guys being from our your hometown, you know, you can, you, you know, it does stuff like what they're doing doesn't seem out of reach. It shows that anything's possible. Yeah, you know, I mean, look at funeral portrait, man. It. They mm-hmm. they grounded out, grinded it out, whatever. Grinded it. You know, out. Um, I like ground. Got it. Got it. Got it. Ground round. Decent ground level out. agent ground behind them, mm-hmm. and look look at the tour that they're going to go out on. Yeah. You know, playing with Marilyn Manson and Five Finger Death Punch this summer. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, it's yeah. this shit's reachable. It is. You know, you just got to keep grinding at it. Oh, Tandy, yeah, I mean, it's awesome. You, yeah, that's the way I see it. Is just like there's so many great musicians in Rochester. Yep, it's like always has been. You just you just got to put in the work. Like you just got to want it and put in the work. And, and I, I think that's why like we've seen semi like small level success is just like yep we all want it and we all for two years now have just been putting in the work and and this is the way that you're going to catch an agent to you know they want to see that you've got some road experience some tour experience that Um, is why we are going on the road as you can you know i mean obviously you want to you know have some packed houses or whichever you know so make sure that you're documenting as much as you can so that you have that in some sort of a resume that at some point you want to shop and try to get you know because that's that's the next step is to you know, get an agent to find you or you find them and them take you into their agency and, you know, then try to, like, get you on some tours like Funeral yeah. Port. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously, like, getting in good with a good booking agency would be nice. Uh, we do work with Ryan Worth with Pinup. Ryan Worth's also in aphasia, yep. uh, as you guys know. Uh, but working with Pinup, I mean, that's what really, like, helped us figure out, like, okay, this is the things, these are the things that we need to do that we haven't been doing. Yep. You know, uh, so super grateful for him to kind of like giving Not us, a, a yeah, giving yeah. us direction and uh, hel- helping us kind of all learn every step of the way, like how the business end of a band operates, because that, yes, it's all fun and music, but on the back end, it is a business and you have to treat it as such. Yeah. Um, I mean, I have those conversations a lot here that, you know, like how I do things and why things are one way and, you know, blah, 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 that there's got to be order and you know like we run this every show local or not like in national where there's a day sheet and yes you know, we've got to stay on a schedule and you know at the end of the day everything is a business this place has to run like a business right you know i mean it just i you, venues don't stay open if you don't run them yeah properly yeah. right you know and, and so when you bands don't road, last if you don't it's true run yeah. them properly yep. you know yep, yep. um yeah but I, I think all gears are working pretty fluidly in this oh game, yeah for sure oh yeah there's a process. If it works, don't break it. Yeah, and you know, like I said, man, you know, again, for the father, for, you, you can't force anything, dude. Stuff's just, it's going to be what it's going to be. So have fun first and foremost. Be careful, yeah. be safe. But, you know, take it day by day, man. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it, if it's meant to be, it's going to happen, yeah. you know? Yeah. So. Um, if it's not meant to be, we'll will it into existence. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, just, just put it out there, you know what I'm saying? You know, just put it out in the universe. It'll, yeah. it'll come right. back. And it's like Vanity Strikes. I mean, you know, this could just be one incarnation of this project, and then, you know, and, and you just can't stress about anything. You yeah. know what I mean? The, the right. internet today, man, just like I think people, we were having this conversation oh God, yeah. yesterday that, you know, I think everybody, especially your age, looks at something and feels that somebody else has got something better, and that's not necessarily the case. No. You know, he's got a great job, you know, great wife, great kid. He's got a lot of side projects that he does. He's great <clears throat> at what he does with this. Um, you know, he, a lot of the stuff that he knows how to do podcast wise, I don't, I probably just know how to, you're here for the talking. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, you're I'm, here to ask I'm, the hard hitting questions. I've always been that way though. You know, I'm just, I, I'm interested and in intuitive and just, yeah. you know, I, I like to know, you know, that's what this is. Yeah. That's why I started doing podcasts a couple of years before COVID. 
and, and I was doing it with another kid that's the same. You know, I, I, whatever, I can do that at a fucking garage. You know, when yeah. somebody's working on my car, if you let me walk in there, I'm just, I'm going to be full of like, so how do you, how did you start doing this? And it, you know, cause it's just, that's the way you learn shit. Yeah. Right. You know? Yeah. The only way you get smarter is by asking those questions. You yeah. Know? Or just watching, you know? Yeah. Big absolutely. YouTube guy now all over that. Oh yeah. YouTube's great. You know, <clears throat> spend hours on YouTube. So Tyler, the big YouTube like guy. YouTube. How many hours did you spend on YouTube figuring out our rig? I'm, I fall asleep to it. <laughs> oh. Your rig? I fall asleep to it. This man spent countless hours on YouTube trying to figure out our in-ear monitoring rig. Oh. Everybody does stuff so differently, so it's like I'm, I'm still just watching videos on how to learn how to do it in case there's, any, it, any, there's ever an issue that comes up. So I literally fall asleep watching these. Uh, so they're, they're that complicated? Rig videos. They can be. <laughs> So it's in like what the, way? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm still learning. But um, hey, you know. throw them in. You just plug the, them into a receiver. Like, the guy at the board does something. Well, like and routing. Like, so like, I'm I know good. like it's it's simple enough to be like, oh, you have the splitter that goes to the the, the uh, in ear mixer, and then front of house gets that. Yeah. But like trying to find the best way to route it, best way to EQ it. Like I'm not well, a sound engineer. Here, man. Like I mean, I know that so, a, a lot of you know a lot of this stuff is fast paced, but you know Ian. Our sound, te- you know, he's, dude, these guys, all, all Dylan I have, and, and Daryl is amazing, and Dylan is great, and Ian's great. I mean, ask a sound guy, you yeah. know, because they're the ones that are hooking it up for you, so they know how to get from point A to point exactly, B. Exactly, yeah. So it's, it's just, just like, you know, whatever questions you too. have. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah. But I, I mean, know they've got a million things to do as well. Yeah, Plus when it's something that's completely foreign and it's like, yeah. all right, I got to just dive in and figure this out. That's, yeah, that's like yeah. me. You know, like I said, I'm, I'm not afraid to walk up to somebody and ask him anything. So like when you're here, yeah, he's busy, but just be like, Ian, I got some questions with like in ears and I'm about to go on the road. Can I get your number? And just like, do you mind if I text you a couple of questions? And I mean, these guys love what they do. You know, yeah, that's like yeah. me. I have no problem, you know, giving advice or some, whatever knowledge I have and just... Well, you figure things out, man. Just don't be afraid to ask people. Yeah, that might be your quickest way. No, yeah. I yeah. mean, like I, I've, I mean, I've got it working right. and stuff. It's just I'm always just trying to learn more. So, are you guys going to throw those out on the road with you and try to use them, or is it going to like, ah, eh, let's not? No, let's not we, get yeah, we've been using them for. Oh, gotcha. For yeah, every, six months now. I think. Maybe? Yeah. Yeah. You're advancing all that stuff with all these rooms too to make sure that that's something that they're. Yeah, sent yeah. them. What? All the stage you never plots know what and you're everything. Into, dude. Sent them all the stage plots and everything. So yeah. far, no issues uh, have come up. So these I'm venues that you're going that into, way. do they do like national touring acts and have like, like uh, what we do, or is it more of more of a? Some of them might be a little iffy. I think, uh, I think the Foundry in Cleveland has definitely done some national shows. Yeah, uh, could the, the, yeah the Foundry is yeah, a big. You might, you walk um, these guys are just like, yeah, I don't. We don't do it. I, I think the Beer Rex <laughs> has put on some bigger regional shows. I don't know about national, uh, but I do think it's pretty low level. Like, I think. Uh, well, we don't have any caps less than like 150, which is nice. And but we don't have anything over like 250 either outside of here. You know, because uh, we know this is where we're probably gonna get three to four hundred. So we can book a room Bingo. that's three to four hundred, you know. Um, so the other the other venues, pro, small. Some are smaller, but some are like the Foundry's a good size. So we'll see. I mean, it, that's really all it is. Like we haven't really uh, seen the venues yet, but I do know that the sound guy and everything hasn't had an issue with our stage plot or our rig. So. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that I mean something when five days today, out from yeah. leaving, I'm hoping You're that they don't send me a message rooms. or something like, so hey. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right. But I just looked at this. It won't work. And you're like, oh. No. Yeah, sometimes I get like that, too. I, I'm sorry, man, if I'm like dominating. No, you good, happen, But, you know, like. He's just like chilling guys in his sick here, glasses. Like, tour managers and whatnot. And it's like. Tour bands at Heffler. And they'll be like, oh, yeah. And I'm like, dude. And you know, like, look at all. right? Like, there's a lot of video, there's a lot of pictures, whatever. I mean, you, you, well, I didn't know it was like you know, a corner stage, or you know, it's like, dude, it's a cool so, you, away. you advance, but you didn't, you don't, yeah. You don't Bro, the internet's at your grasp, and we yeah, carry these. Like you guys yeah, do. So no, they, I'm hoping that you I mean, definitely you looked that. up these venues, but yeah, like, off the top of my like, I don't. I don't remember. Like, I just don't remember. No, but like one by one, you can be like, oh shit. Yeah. That stage looks like it's, you know, four by four. I don't know. Well, like before shows. Do y'all want to talk about Erie? 
Oh. <laughs> Erie, Pennsylvania? Oh. It was awesome. Uh, I, had to, I had to reroute the sound guys uh, the way he had everything done because we're digital for the most part. So yeah. like, in order for me to play or get our tracks to go, I had to literally redo it for him because oh, he was no. just running it off like a little like 12 channel mixer. <laughs> well, what? And again, yep. I'm not trying to be an overcritical, but that's all the kind of stuff that, you know, you really want to map out. Like, so, you yeah. know, what, what board do you have and whatever? Because, I mean, you know, are you going into a DIY space for the most part, sort of? Or are you going into a music venue? And then, you know, want to know you guys want to know walking in what you're in for, yeah. you know? But, yeah. And like we were talking in the first chapter that we had that didn't yeah. work out that, you know, um, it'll be great to see. Like, you know, it gives you an idea. I mean, I get very... Um, I'm lucky that, you know, like people like Cody and, and um, give it to me. Rob. Rob. Thank you. Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, they've been in a lot of venues, man, and they come back and they're like, oh, no, this place is like, you know, and I'm like, oh, okay. You know, because you get some bands that just, they'll come in here and they'll just complain about everything, you know. And, in, and for a small 400 cap venue that, you know, gets this size touring band or whatever, like, they'll say, like, no, this place is, you know, even Ian, you know, he, he does some touring and whatnot. So it's nice to hear every once in a while that we're a, a step above, yeah, you know. I, oh, yeah. I love yeah. Being here. Well, I, the elevated stage is, I think, a yeah. bonus in here. And, I mean, it is a corner stage, so there's, there's some challenges there a little bit that we work with. But the, the one thing that you get with a corner stage is you get these sight lines that are big wingspan, not a straight rectangle where, you know, and, I can see and again, pretty much everybody. Yeah, and yeah, everybody like that comes sitting to here, see you, you see I everything. I love that, dude. That's like you know? the best part. And like, if it's not an elevated line. stage, man, I'm just, I'm, you know, this was, growing up, this was what you had to have. You know, people like Jed Seaver, and I don't know if you know any of these names, but these oh, guys yeah. are in, you know, Donnie, uh, Donnie Death. Cody's dad. Yep. You know, these were the stages with, you know, lighting trusts, front and back, and elevated stages, and full lighting packages. You wouldn't like the Penny Arcade had. If you were a band back in the day, you wouldn't play these smaller. It just it's, everybody wanted Water like Street the, too. You know, the '80s, the you know, this was the small Motley Crue stage, but you had to have it all mm -hmm. and Foggers and whatever. I mean, and we're probably going to invest in like the geysers at some point because those are like the new things. Just to have you a couple small ones on the side next of week. Well. <laughs> Dude, I mean, everything is on Amazon expedited. Two, day, two days away. Expedited. Yeah. Yo, <laughs> yo anyway. I want to give a quick shout out to Sirens and Sailors, though. Sirens and Sailors. I can't believe we didn't bring them up. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh. Tight ass Rochester metalcore band. I know. Yeah. <laughs> like Doug Court, too. Unbelievable. Yeah, new band. I just, you know, don't get me started on that. It's like, you know, every six months or something. I, same thing, dude. I mean, they, uh, Kyle's grown up with me. You know, Kyle played the exactly. music hall in Renoff, I think was, and look it up. But, oh, yeah, you know, don't. Renoff was a band that was huge, like did you guys kind of numbers and perspective kind of numbers back in mm -hmm. the day. So all these kids, and it's just like, you know, Kyle, let's you do, do show. Aren't Kyle. they doing like a, sh like, aren't they in a new band or something? Well, Doug is. So Doug, yeah, Doug, Doug, got Doug a is band, in a new project. Sirens is just, it's hard to get them. Out of retirement, man. Right. And I'm like, <laughs> dude, I'll put you it. anywhere you want. It doesn't have to be here, but let's do. It. Let's just do a show, man. Yeah. People love that band, and they yeah. don't. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I mean, even I like the money that eventually. the money that we sort of throw their way or offer to throw their way is like, I don't know. They're just they're one of those four dudes that love them. Not talking shit. It just they they it's all on their schedule, dude. And it's yep, we're gonna do a show, and then sometimes they'll do like bug jar, and it's like, bro, you're. You're gonna have fucking. You got 500 people minimal that are gonna come see you. If, Just if you put bands like you guys with them, that's. And for whatever reason you guys are watching, we will gladly open for you. Yeah. Guys. Well, Kyle, if you're watching, once again, <laughs> let's play play a show. Play a show somewhere. So anyway, that bug jar it. sold. That, that that show sold out within like minutes, though. Didn't the bug it? jar one. Yeah. Yeah, and then like I said, and that that's, and then there was a big fallout. It was like, why would you guys do something where there's only 200 tickets available? Right, and you know? that's such a t like. Yeah, it's just so small. Well, I would be so uncomfortable. I get it. I, I mean, they, there once, and I was like, oh my. There's God. a lot of bands that wanted you know want yeah, us pack was. a room and sell it out, but it's like, dude, you guys could have <laughs> gone to like the next two or three levels up and still sold the show out. Maybe oh, yeah. not in 24 hours, but definitely before the play date. Mm -hmm. That Got might you. have been why they did it. So they'd be like, we sold it to in 24 hours. Maybe. Hour. But I mean, I don't know. Again, it's a, it is a, yeah. I mean, it well, is a show so. then. Or do the, you know, make sure when you're scheduling that show and you're booking it out three or four months, say like, so, okay, Friday, 
or Saturday or whatever, do you by chance have the day after or the day before the front? You know, I don't know which day they, you know, so that just in case that scenario unfolds where it sells out in an hour, they all right, dude, let's do the Friday yeah. as well. You know, yeah. whole, oh, yeah, block it like out. A two day show. Yeah. 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 Kind of what Beartooth is doing later yeah. this year in Buffalo. I know that band is, they weren't here years ago. I mean, some yeah. of these bands, man, they just blow up. Yeah, man. Dude. It, it happens overnight, especially in the internet age. Like, yeah. It, if you get a TikTok or something that can blow up, like, dude, I'm telling you, know, you're you bringing some of these, in a whole new. These bands I started with, man, when I started doing this, like, uh, we had Avenged Sevenfold at Steel Music Hall, Shine Down were some of the first bands oh. I booked, man. And look where they are now. That's they, all, they all start at the club level. That's yeah, insane. you know what's really crazy, dude? Again, I'm, I'm, I'm like yapping away, but. <laughs> He's so sorry. Yeah, I just want he's you to very know he's so sorry. sorry. I'm usually not. Yeah, when we do our podcast, it's a 50 50 split, I think. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's hard to find like any of the information, dude, from that far back. Because mm -hmm. I myself would like to, I would love to see all the bands that we brought through that room. I mean, I can remember a bunch, but there's, there's a couple of little facets that I can see. And it was like, holy shit. Like, those were a couple of them, man. Like, a few years ago, people were popping stuff up. And I was like, oh my God, that's right. We did Event Sevenfold in there and like Shine Down. And it's, Crazy. The opportunity hey, is oh, there. Carol, take the floor. Well, you know, we've got a few minutes here. So. Have some photography questions. Oh, geez, you know. How about this one? Because I, I always like to hear what I, what the answer is to this. So I, I remember one time going to a bonsai. There was a guy crowd surfing. He probably weighed 200-something pounds. Oh, and he boy. came crashing down on this girl's head oh. and knocked her right out. And everyone was just, like, not even paying attention. They're just pretty much trampling her. So we, we ended up grabbing her, picking her up. She got carried off, probably stretchered out somewhere, probably to the hospital. Um, but, you know, with all that being said, I mean, with all the shows that you've been to, whether you've been on stage, whether you've not been on stage, what's one crazy thing you've seen at a show? <laughs> Good question. You want to take that? Okay. Uh, so there's, what was it? Water Street, The Wall Death. Oh yeah. man, that was wild! Wall of Death at the Water Street Music. Yes. Which who was who was playing? It was uh, the Perspectives <laughs> album release. Show. Oh no, shit! <laughs> yeah. A local show? Mm. Yeah. No yeah. kid. Well, oh, on we, the club side. No, no, no. no. Oh, no. It was main stage. Yeah. Gotcha. We we oh. do a Wall of Death for our song "A Chance to Live Forever." And um, well, you open it about eight measures more than what it normally is in the song. Yeah, we just we do a Wall of Death for "A Chance to Live Forever," and uh, that is. To this date, definitely the biggest one we've seen uh, for, for us. Not the biggest one in general, but the biggest one we've seen for us. And it, people were killing each other in there. It looked yeah, like. It's just like a full on 300 movie just going on. Everybody's just I'm telling you, man. Slaughtering like, each other. Um, so back, back years ago, man, we, you know, I, there, was a, there was a time where I was with a, another guy and we were, you know, a bigger company and did some big shows. And we did Slipknot. Um, mm. The Jägermeister tour in like 2004, I think, uh, at the, I think I don't, it was Bill Gray's, and I think it got renamed again. The, I, the ice rink out there. Oh, it's Tim Hortons now. Is it Tim Hortons? Timmy Ho. It, it was Hose. like them. Fear Factory. Chimera. Oh, Fear Factory's <sighs> great. I don't know. You'd have to look it up, but dude, you should go watch the footage from that place when we did that show. Like just the pit. Like ended up looking. It was going so fast it looked like a tornado, and I'm pretty sure that wow. they did that. It was sick. Yeah, we did like three or four shows there, dude. Like. To have that on the resume is kind of cool, that tour. I mean, that was, you know, kind of going in the dressing room and seeing all the costumes and all that, but they weren't that big. And then they all came back, not all of them, but most of them, four out of the whatever's in that band, came back to the Steel Music Hall that night. No one knew who the fuck they were. Because right. they, you know, always had masks and stuff on. And then, like, we did, like, Fall Out Boy at that place. And, yeah, anyway. I think the craziest That's thing... That I've personally seen. I'm not saying Microphone. from like. Oh, you got one. Sorry. I got one. <laughs> the thing that I've seen personally, it's not necessarily the craziest thing, but the coolest thing in my opinion is when um, Poison the Prophet would bring on people on the stage. Next thing you know, there's like a oh, stage literally full of you people. That. <laughs> All these like that's that's a like it was nightmare. It was oh my God. wild. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it gets like shoulder to shoulder packed and everything. It's it's cool, but it's it, it's tight. I yeah, mean, yeah, I mean, you do have to watch like the, the snake boxes and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, whatever. Sometimes <laughs> there's collateral damage in what we do. <laughs> yeah, you know, the bathrooms get the worst of it. Oh God, yeah. Oh, there they, goes the soap dispenser. Well, there goes the paper towel dispenser. There goes the whole stall structure. Yep. It's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Goes the whole oh, we've walked in and had the whole. Uh, no, I shouldn't mention it and give anybody any. Yeah, there's there's been trouble. <laughs> there's been some, some <laughs> double trouble in the bathroom. 
Well, anyways, guys, well, you know, I, I think we covered everything, and, you know, we'll, we'll wrap it up, and we're, we're excited, man, you know, and happy for you that you're going out on the road. And like thank you. Said, man, be safe and thank you, thank you. Your eyes, you know, in the back of your head, in the side of your head. and Yeah, yeah, we're, we're very, very excited. It's a, it's a new thing for all of us going on the road, right? Scott, you... Right. Um, right. I did a small one like year, like before COVID, but that doesn't, oh. it doesn't matter. It doesn't count. It, it's a it new experience doesn't. for all. It's a new experience. It's a new brand day. new yes, experience it is. for every single member here. It's a good thing, man. Is you, yeah. You, you're doing one show, then you're here, right? Yeah. You yep. have a little bank here. So you, you know, yeah. cause a, a little extra money just for the shit that can always pop up and knock on what it doesn't, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Just walk into it, man, with as much prep as you can. And I mean, it's seven days, but seven days is. <clears throat> You know, you're out it's, on the road in the summer. I man. mean, we're, yeah, we're, we're on the road for nine days, seven shows. So we have two off days, which is nice. Gotcha. We get to kind of chill. But, and uh, where very were those needed? Uh, wherever. Uh, city uh, where? Uh, I, let's see. Uh, in between. Oh, is that our timer? We're yeah, out. We're, we're out of done. time. Okay, cut the mic. We're out of time. Oh, no. Um, But no, I think our off days are after we, after the show on the 9th, we have off on Monday. And then we have. But enough. where? What city are you in? Uh, we're leaving Massachusetts, heading to Long Island. It's only like. Have you an mapped hour out like what to do on those away. days? Like within an hour or two of drive, that's sort of on your way. That's a, cool. that's a this week thing. Start gotcha. looking at the start yeah. looking at the spots, and we all start figuring it out. I mean, we're all going to be on a bus together for nine days straight. We'll be able to figure yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. He, he really wants to go to a Seosin show, which is on one of our off days, and assassin. We go, whoop, whoop. He oh, said assassin. Yeah, I heard of Who's that? But I know we're wrapping it up. So all in all, we're very excited. We have, we have two. Uh, we're playing a brand new song at the show here next week. Uh, a song nobody's heard us play live. Unless Cam sent it to somebody. Oh, no. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, that'll be very exciting. We're working on a bunch of new music, a bunch of cool things behind the scenes that uh, we can't wait to keep announcing throughout the year and keep working towards uh and n really none of it would have been possible without like the genuine support rochester has given us since the start like since our very first show we had a crowd of like over a hundred people and i'm like how does this happen you know um, you merch? huh merch no, no no unfortunately not uh oh it's all right but guys when you're at the show deep these deep guys are going out for, on the road for seven days you know, buy a shirt, buy two shirts. You maybe know? three. Yeah. Maybe four. Oh, maybe yeah, five. You hey, you know what? Cool. Your mama yeah. needs a shirt. Second one's cool. Buy it for the whole family. Yeah. It's fun for the whole family. You use it like as a bed for the first one you bought? Yeah. That's true. Put a tip jar. Modern on. problems Road require trip modern yeah. solutions. Trip, uh, I mean, hey, this would be a cool idea I'm gonna too. Put, Get some onesies. I'm going to put out kids. a shot glass for our I've tip been jar. screaming that, dude. <laughs> Paralander onesies yeah, for the baby. Paralander hey, onesies, out. man. My kid he, needs some more clothes. Yeah. Get a, get a we, pad, we, dude. Get a we'll little pad. Make it. your list. You make know, a baby list. wipes and all this good stuff. Just go, go fall into the oh, maternity. Oh, 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 yeah. Well, course, no, I mean you know. for you guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're, you're checking out the merch table. You got a t-shirt. You got a hoodie over here. You got a, uh, a baby onesie here. Some Paralandra ass wipes got for the baby here. Everything's Paralandra ass wipes. Bring your toilet paper, dude. Yeah. The truck stops is like four inches wide and it's like cardboard. Um, and not only you know. that, but Jesus Christ, you go to those truck Think stops. Of everything. All right, guys, we'll wrap it up, man. We'll we'll, we'll see you next week. Make Rochester That's awesome. proud. Goodbye. Next week, thank Bye. you. Bye. Like Bye. you know you will. Goodbye. You lost the game. Uh, oh. Goodbye. Oh, he fucking did that, didn't he? <laughs> oh, awesome. Thanks, guys. But I wish I